Hello, my friends, Mrs. McBride here. I've got some very sad news for you. This is the last video of the year. This is the last AP Physics C video. Can you believe it? I can't believe it. All right, um, the last video that of the year is gonna be focusing on how do we figure out what the period of an oscillating spring and an oscillating pendulum are. Now, you may remember this from last year because we touched on it a little last year, but I'm gonna do one of our favorite things is we are going to derive something starting with the equation. Did I hear you say F equals MA? You're right. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're talking about, first we'll talk about springs. Okay, and we're talking about specifically springs that are oscillating. Okay, so if you think here, excuse my bad drawings, Okay, that maybe you have a spring that looks something like this, okay? That this right here is its equilibrium position. And what we're going to do is we're gonna bring this spring up to some point here, just like you did in lab the other day. And it's going to oscillate or go back and forth between these positions, where this position here and this position here both represent the maximum amplitude or the maximum displacement. Okay, or we would say at this point here, remember, we've got the maximum potential energy here, the maximum potential energy here, and we would say at this point, we've got the maximum kinetic energy, which also means we've got the maximum velocity here, and we've got the maximum acceleration because we're changing speeds here, right? We're going from some positive speed to zero to some negative speed, okay? Now that's just a little bit of review, okay? Now, just think in your mind, if I could if I could show this, we've got this is oscillating back and forth or up and down, and we're wondering, how do we figure out the period of this? You might also be saying to yourself, why do we want to figure out the period of this? Well, because we're physicists and that's what we do. All right, so first things first, I said, anytime we're deriving something, a good place to start is F equals MA, okay? So what forces are acting on this particular object? Well, you might say to yourself, I know what forces are acting. The forces that are acting here are the spring force, right? So we would say that the spring force or FS is equal to negative KX. Okay, so I could say that negative kx, therefore, is equal to ma. Well, now what is the acceleration equal to? Well, if you remember, last time we were taking notes, we derived the following. I'm pulling out my notes from last class. Here we go. Notes from last class. Last time we derived that the acceleration is equal to negative omega squared x, where where omega, again, is the angular velocity, or we said this is really our two pi f over t, okay? So we can really replace or say that a, in this case, is equal to negative omega squared x. Now that's important because we're trying to get to the period, so we're, we'll get there in just a second. So I'm gonna substitute this in over here, all right? Or we have that negative kx is equal to negative omega, oh, Sorry, let me, I forgot the M. I messed up our last video. Okay, so what do we do now or what does this give us? Well, we could say that the negatives will cancel, the X's will cancel, or this could give me that K is equal to M times omega squared. Or if we solve for omega, okay, we might be able to say that omega is equal to the square root of k over m. Now, how does this help us? Well, you might also be saying to yourself, we always have been saying that omega is equal to two pi times the frequency. So here we go. So omega is also equal to two pi times the frequency. And the whole point was to find the period, so we're almost there. We know that the frequency is equal to one over the period. Okay, so if we plug that in here, we get two pi times one over the period is equal to k over m. 
So what I really wanna do is solve for the period. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by t, or I get two pi is equal to t times the square root of k over m. And I want to get t by itself, so I'm gonna multiply both sides by the square root of m over k, or I'm gonna get that the period of an oscillating spring is equal to two pi times the square root of m over k. All right, so what does this tell me? This again is the period of an oscillating spring, okay? And I know that you can look at the, um, you can look at the equation and we can just be very specific that this depends on the mass or the object that's hanging on the end of the spring. And then it also depends on lowercase k. Do you remember what lowercase k stands for? You're right, lowercase k is the spring constant. Okay. All right, now we can do the same process for the period of a pendulum, and I do think it's really cool, but I also know that um, deriving things is not everybody's favorite. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell you what the equation is, and then I will um, let our friends go that do not enjoy deriving, but if you are one of those friends that do enjoy deriving, believe me, I've got a special treat for you at the end of this video. Okay, so we can also say that the period of an oscillating pendulum, okay, so if now we're talking instead of springs, we're talking about pendulums. I grabbed a piece of college ruled paper here and I am struggling to write this small. The struggle is real here, friends. Okay. Okay, so we've got an oscillating pendulum, which apparently is getting bigger as it oscillates. Oh yeah, yeah, my drawing is just really great. Okay, so we've got this pendulum that's oscillating back and forth. And again, I just wanna be clear, right? That this spot here, again, that's our maximum potential energy up here, also maximum acceleration. This spot down here, maximum speed, maximum kinetic energy. Okay, and then this spot and this spot are the same. Again, maximum uh, potential, maximum acceleration here. All right, so what is the equation? Well, it looks very similar. In this case, we're gonna say TP, the period of a pendulum, is equal to two pi times the square root of L over G. Again, this is the period of an oscillating pendulum. Okay. And we're gonna say that this depends on, what do you think L is in this particular case? You're right, length. And little g, so the acceleration due to gravity. I guess I could spell out the whole word gravity. So if you were to take an oscillating spring and an oscillating pendulum and bring them to the moon, which one would remain the same or which one would have the same period and which one would the period change? Well, on the moon, we know there's a different acceleration due to gravity. So we would find that the period of the pendulum would change, but the period of the spring would remain the same. If you were to instead change how much mass was on the end here and change how much mass was on the end here, which of them would see a change in period? If we change the mass, we can see that this depends on mass, so the mass of the oscillating spring would, would change and therefore the period would change. We can see here that the mass is not in this equation, so if you change the mass on here, it wouldn't matter, so the period of the pendulum would remain the same. All right. Um, what I would like to do now is, for people who are not interested in seeing how do you derive this equation, if you didn't think that this derivation up here was fun, and I can't imagine why, um, we are going to go ahead and derive this equation. But if you would like to stop watching this video right now, I completely understand. 
What you're doing from here is you have two things to do for the rest of class. You need to look at the oscillations Google form and you also need to do chapter, hold on, chapter four in the review book. Okay, and we'll go over both of those things on Friday. All right, bye friends. All right, for those of you who are staying, I think this stuff is really cool. And I really like driving things because it makes me figure out where things are coming from. So if we're talking about the pendulum, okay, so you've got the pair, here's my pendulum. Okay, this is my, if it was completely at center, so it's not. Okay, we might be saying to ourselves, well, what forces are acting in which direction? Well, we know that gravity is always pulling down. And in this case, the tension is pulling this way. But the direction of acceleration is sort of, you know, in line, let me, let me do a better job here, in line this way, or it's rotating or moving in a circle. Okay, so I would say, and you'll just have to trust me on this guy here, that this is going to be mg sine theta. If you don't want to trust me, we can say that this angle is the same as this angle, right? And this is the um, adjacent side, so this, plus, this side must be cosine, whereas this side must be sine, okay? So instead, I just got blurry here for a second. There we go. So instead of starting out with the sum of the forces equals ma, since we're rotating, we're gonna start out with the fact that the sum of the torques equals I fish I know, I threw a curveball in there. All right, so we're saying um, which forces are acting in which direction. Now remember, torque is radius times force. Okay, so the um, force that's acting or that's causing it to rotate is going to be our mg sine theta. Our radius is the distance from the center, which I would say would be the length of the pendulum, right? So I'm going to say here that we've got that L is gonna be multiplied by mg sine theta, okay? So this is going to equal I fish. We're going to say that this is going to be a small angle approximation. Meaning that if the angle is small, sine of theta is equal to theta. Well, do you believe me? Let's try it, okay? Well, let's say we have the sine of five degrees, right? Well, we would really need the sine of five degrees in radians, okay, right? So it would really be the sine of, we'd have to multiply this by five times pi over 180 right? That would be how we would figure out what we've got here. So five times pi over 180. Okay. I got to switch out of degree mode and here into radian mode. Okay. Tight two. Five pi over 180. Okay. Um, and I take, so this would be five degrees in radians, right? Which would be 0 0.087 radians. And then if I find the sine of this, it gives me, look at that, 0 0.087. Okay, so when the angle is small, the sine of theta equals theta. Okay, let's, let's go crazy here and try 20 degrees. So again, we would do 20 pi over 180, okay? Or this would give me 0.349. Okay, now if I take the sine of 20 degrees or the sine, whoop, the sine of that, okay, I get 0.342. Okay, so we're, we're close, but not quite the same. If we did um, 40 degrees, 40 pi over 180, this gives you 0.698. If we take the sine of 40 degrees, this gives me 0.642. OK, 
okay? So again, the larger we get, the farther that these two are off, so therefore we can't actually approximate them this way unless we use the small angle approximation. So what I'm saying is we're gonna keep the angle small. So what is the small angle? Or this really works for anything less than 20 degrees. Okay, so I'm gonna substitute in where I see sine theta, I'm gonna put in theta, or I'm gonna get L M G theta is equal to I fish. Okay. And we know that A is equal to, oops, I, I forgot to make this negative. We're moving in the negative direction. Abby Keenan is knocking on the door and I'm telling her, give me five minutes. Okay. Um, so we're going to make this negative because it's moving to the left. Okay, so A we know is equal to negative omega squared x, or we can also say that fish is equal to negative omega squared theta, right? So we can do a little substitution in here. Or um, we've got this fact here, we can substitute in here, right? So this is going to give me negative L mg theta is equal to I times negative omega squared theta. Or in this case, the negatives and the thetas cancel, or we get LMG is equal to I omega squared. Okay? Um, we're going to assume a couple of things here. I is equal to MR squared when we have a point particle. This is what's at the end of the pendulum, or we can say that I is equal to ML squared, the length of the pendulum, okay? Or we get LMG is equal to ML squared omega squared. We also can say, or here, or G is equal to L omega squared, right? And we can also say that omega is equal to the distance over time, or two pi over t. We're almost there, okay? Or this is gonna give me g times l times two pi over t squared, okay? So we're going to, what do we do from here? Well, we need to solve for t, right? So I'm gonna get g equals four pi squared l over t squared, right? Or t squared equals four pi squared l over g. Okay, or if I take the square root of both sides, I get two pi times the square root of l over g. I'm not sure if anybody is still with me here, but if you are, I hope you enjoyed the derivation. Have a wonderful day. Bye friends.